This morning time, I am going to preach um, the same subject, which is the subject of uh, God of Valleys. We were talking uh, about uh, the God of Valleys PowerPoint. The God of Valleys um, last two weeks, um, you know, except last week. We talked about it and, uh, um, you know, the first week we talked about the uh, the Lord of Valleys in the shadow of death. He's a God which is in the shadow of uh, death. Then uh, we talk about the God, the God of Valleys, the Valley of Decision. That's what uh, we learned from the book of, uh, you, know, um, you know, Exodus, the Valley of Decision, Eskol Valley. That's what we see. This morning time, you know, last Tuesday, last Tuesday, Wednesday, Spirit of God was prompting to preach about uh, another valley, which is the valley of uh, depression. You know, the word depression, we don't like it, even I don't like it. I don't like to preach about that, but, um, you know, I was asking to God, am I really going to preach about uh, this valley? Because uh, hundreds of... Um, uh, different valleys we see from um, Genesis to Revelation. Probably we will find something else, Lord. And God was again prompting me, prompting me, prompting me to preach about the valley of uh, depression. So this morning time, um, for that, um, we will turn our passage to First, Co First King chapter 19. Verse number 1 onwards. Let me read those passages. First King chapter 19 verse number 1 onwards. And I have told Jezebel all that Elijah has done and how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of the one or one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into wilderness and came and sat down and under a juniper tree. Then he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down. And the angel of the Lord came again and a second time and touched him. And said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink, and went in the strength of forty days, forty nights, and you horeb the mountain of God. Praise God. Now we see chapter 18. He performed a miracle, basically. You know, through his life, um, there was miracle happen in the Mount Carmel. So he killed, he slaughtered 400 uh, prophets of Baal and 450 prophets of uh, Asherah. And uh, he ran before the chariots of uh, King Ahab into Jezreel. Now, when we study the root map of uh, um, Elijah, we see. From the Mount Carmel, chapter 19, when it comes, uh, then again he is going towards the Mount Horeb. So, two mountains on two chapters. In between, we see a valley, even though it was not mentioned, just really is a valley, but the place he was lying down, that is the, the place under the juniper tree, there is no mention about a place, but... You know, as you already found out, the two mountains, there is a valley of, uh, you know, there is a valley of wilderness. There is a valley of depression for Elijah. Hallelujah. 
one thing let me tell you in this morning time bible is a very reliable book you know why because this is not a one side story just like any other religious book chapter 18 of first kings we see the story of elijah he was a giant he was a faith warrior he was a prayerful man we see all these things in the chapter 18 but when it comes into chapter 19 the whole story changed or oh, we see the other side of elijah from chapter 19 you know not only elijah even the david a man after god's own heart he had uh, he committed sin and killed uriah so it was mentioned in the bible the same you know job if you study about the job the chapter 1 mention job is a trustworthy honest righteous godly person but when it comes into the chapter 3 even job was cursing his birthday praise the lord you know the two sides of the story which is mentioned in the bible that's why the bible is so reliable and we can learn each and every passage from the bible there is one or another lesson that we can learn it in this morning time as we are going to study of the negative shade of elijah we are going to learn some lessons even in this morning time praise god and we see here so as i already said this valley you know i probably you know i just you know the even though the name is not mentioned for elijah this is a valley valley of depression then we will ask what is depression basically so the, you know few words you know basically about the depression depression is a constant state of uh, sadness it's a deep mood of a despair and a hopelessness or a, you know and a loss of interest for everything so probably uh, you know further i can say what is the difference between the sadness uh, and the depression sadness is a temporary emotions momentary emotions even though sadness you know when we lose job or when our loved ones uh, going through tough time or we failed in exams we feel a uh, sadness you know emotionally we feel sadness that is very momentary temporary after some times uh, you know we uh, uh, we fight against uh, the emotion and we get through it get through it pass through it but the problem with the uh, depression the depression it's a kind of a constant state that means uh, it's the it's the change the state is not changing basically it's a persistent feeling even though i want to get away with uh, i want to get through it uh, pass through it but cannot come out cannot get out from the state of a uh, feeling of sadness which is called uh, depression all right so um you know the you know series of uh, depression you know um you know if you study the most depressed depressive nation in the world is unfortunately united states of america and um, um, you know the study says uh, between 10 to 14 uh, you know uh, the age of 10 to 14 even the kids those who are seated even the front side uh, they also go through depressive stages in uh, life basically so even though we don't recognize it we don't lo- you know we don't notice it you know as a result of a depressive episode you know one of the symptom is a suicidal thought or suicide so that's why even in the united states of america itself um, so between the 10 to 14 the age of 10 to 14 this is the second leading cause of death basically depression is the second leading cause of the death and uh, uh, between 15 to 24 the age of 15 to 24 many of you are this is the third leading cause of death uh, um, that's what uh, the, you know uh, the, the, you know uh, the, the researchers uh, mention about uh, uh, about a depression reason for depression uh, uh, for uh, you know as i already mentioned unexpected um, events in life uh, Uh, such as a death uh, or a sickness uh, or uh, uh, e- even the failures of exams or uh, any other failures in life uh, 
serious illness uh, unrealistic expectation then um, uh, abuse of such a physical emotional um, um, you know sexual psychological uh, and uh, even um, uh, you know family conflict uh, loneliness rejection etc and etc these are the major uh, uh, major reasons uh, for the depressions basically and um, this morning time we are going to study from this passage uh, there is a depressive episode of elijah you know you know let me tell you including and you you know everyone the preacher and uh, those who are listening in this morning time we all go through some sort of uh, depressive episodes in our personal life been gone through or gone through in the past uh, or going through at this moment so even though whether we notice it or not uh, either it is mild or uh, severe you know you know the status you know stages would be different but we all go through some some sort of uh, depression or sadness in our personal life now the elijah was going through a state of depression in his personal life there are reasons that he was going through that uh, state of uh, depression there are four reasons at least uh, i can mention in this morning time the one the first reason probably i will say the unrealistic uh, hope you know when um, god you know <coughs> you know in a while in the carmel when god sent his fire on the altar and uh, when he slaughtered all the prophet of baal and ashera and uh, you know god when god proven he must the uh, you know righteous prophet over that generation of course you know he thought the whole world the whole generation the whole land of uh, uh, jerusalem the whole land of israel is going to turn into god because this is the time uh, isabel and ahab the one of the most cruel kings and the queens uh, were leading the country and the people were away and distracted from uh, the, uh, the god of uh, el shatai and uh, they were they were worshiping baal and ashera and they were living an immoral life um, and even Elijah even thought maybe the whole land will be or oh, um, the whole land may uh, come into a repentance hallelujah and uh, the people will be revived praise the lord but unfortunately so we see there is you know there is no revival happen after that miracle there is no repentance happen in the country hallelujah and not only that there is a you know for elijah it was an unexpected threat also for elijah as i already mentioned in the mount carmel you know through elijah god did a miracle so you know elijah you know experience elijah thought so this is the culmination of uh, my battle against uh, baal and ashera and uh, you know elijah thought uh, no you know i have won the victory so no more no more battle no more war again you know against uh, baal or ashera so no you know elijah thought i am going to take a break basically you know every you know you know uh, as, uh, after the exams uh, you know the kids will take a break after sunday the pastors will take a break you know uh, we all take a break so just like just like that you know elijah wanted to take a break you know on the jezreel the city of jezreel he wanted to take a break but he heard a voice of jezebel you know mentioning that uh, then tomorrow next you know within 24 hour you will be the, you you are going to be died you are going to be killed hallelujah so Elijah never expected this threat in his life. Uh, hallelujah. Not only that, you know, when you study about uh, Elijah, he was physically very weak because, or, you know, as I already said, from Mount Carmel to Jezreel, it is almost uh, 40 miles. He was, he ran before the chariots of uh, Ahab. Then uh, again, uh, then from Jezreel, to Beersheba, another 95 miles. 
then he left his servant there then again one day he ran again so you know this is my guess assumption at least he ran at least 200 miles within three days so you can imagine how how much he was tired physically weak and tired so hallelujah as a result of uh, that physical weakness emotionally also he was bound down uh, all these reasons uh, emotionally he got bound down uh, because of the threat uh, of uh, Jezebel hallelujah hallelujah all these are very true at the same time in this morning time as a pastor we have to figure out um, when we go through depressive episodes uh, in our personal life um, there is always uh, there is a spiritual reasons uh, also for the depressive episodes number one sin of course the sin is uh, number one reason for the depressive episodes uh, in our personal life uh, sin means you all know sin what is sin it is called a hamartia missing the mark it is called a missing the mark hallelujah when we are not doing the real purpose of god when we are away distracting from the plan of god hallelujah that is basically sin you know for sin you don't need to commit a big sin big sin that you know big sins but the sins you know, when we are away from God, when we are not doing the purpose of God, not fulfilling the assignment of God, that itself is a sin, basically. And now we know Elijah was fleeing away. So that is another reason. Then again, of course, there is an evident reason. Probably we can uh, find out here the demonic forces was uh, deployed uh, Elijah into depression hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah spiritual attack when we are doing the mission when we are in the plan of god there is a spiritual attack we can expect any time in our personal life so spiritual attack it's a un inevitable unavoidable thing in our personal life all right so this morning time just like elijah we all go through, as I, as I said, we all go through some sort of a depression or a sadness or anxieties in our personal life. But when we go through this uh, serious stage, we have to, um, we have to uh, remember one thing. You know, every decision that we are taking during this time, uh, it's uh, very important because one decision can alter the whole life upside down so now we see three decisions or you know um, that uh, elijah has taken that made his life uh, upside down but uh, by god's grace uh, you know god changed his life uh, towards the end of verse number 10 so i will come and uh, finish today's passage so the first thing we see during the moments of uh, his threat, he fled for his life. The first king, chapter 19, verse number 2, then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let's go down, do to me, and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them, by tomorrow about this time, when he saw that, he, rose, he arose and went for his life. He went for his life. You know, when we face a threat, everyone, we all, as a defensive mechanism, we all take a one step, one step. Either we fight or fly, you know, flight or flee or freeze. Three things. Or fight, flight or freeze. Now, of course, here, here, this man has taken the second step. When you think about it, it's a very normal thing. Humanly, human point of view, what he has taken is a very normal thing. Either you fight, if you're not, you know, if you're not able to fight against your enemy, you just flight or you just flee. So, Elijah just fled. There is no problem. But the problem, he was a prophet. Not only that, 
on the previous day he was the one who slaughtered 400 the prophets of baal 450 prophets of asherah he was the one who ran before the chariots of ahab hallelujah not only that he was a prayer warrior you know he could able to stop the clouds of rain for three years praise god he was a very giant a spiritual giant in the old testament if you read that same elijah when he heard the voice you know voice of jezebel he was totally disturbed and fled for his life hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah you know my kids over here are you know they don't get it anything in this morning time probably you know the tom and jerry's cartoon right probably you you see tom and jerry right tom who is tom eh? a cat jerry who is cat uh, who is jerry is a mouse all right so tom always chase after whom jerry jerry so jerry and the tom most of the time if i am right tom most of the time he just for the fun sake he's chasing after jerry but at the same time jerry always run for his life right run for his life in the same manner you know the elijah was running for his life now here jezebel is the tom and elijah is jerry and uh, jezebel is chasing after elijah and he was fled for his life hallelujah yesterday you know let me come into adults <laughs> I cannot go further with that. <laughs> Yesterday we heard a you know message from Pastor Linish. You know, stand firm. Stand firm. It's a beautiful message. You know, I said, you know, you are again taking my message. <laughs> because Bible always teach a lesson in the bible you know just like we heard in the in the during the time of challenge gideon or joshua they stood firm in the midst of the difficulty praise the lord why they are spiritual giants why they are <clears throat> godly people because they stood firm in the midst of the challenges even the New Testament also we know. Book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse number 13. We see having done all. You may stand firm. You may stand firm. Take up the armor. Which stand all the whites of the evil. Until everything is done. Praise the Lord. Stand firm. It's a you know stand firm. It's a plan of God. Hallelujah. In this morning time, whether Jezebel, whether the forces of the dark uh, spirits, hallelujah, spirits, hallelujah, whether evil forces, whether the depressive episodes, hallelujah, trying to pull you out from the plan of God in this morning time uh, as a Christian, as a child of God, hallelujah, there is a plan, there is a assignment for each and every one. You need to stand firm. Praise the Lord. You need to stand firm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are, you know, the thing is that, suppose, if you are going to flee for every threat, you know, the whole life, you always will flee. Flee. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning time, let me tell you, book of Jeremiah chapter 12, verse number you know, five, uh, you know, uh, Bible, you know, asking, God is asking to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, one thing over there, hallelujah. If you raised with the foot soldiers and fallen down, how are you going to contend with uh, the forces of 
horses. Hallelujah. If you are going to fall down, if you are going to be very in the peace, in the, in the land of peace, how are you stand firm in the thickest of Jordan? Hallelujah. This morning time, Spirit of God is speaking to someone. Hallelujah. The same God who spoken to Jeremiah, the same God is speaking to you in this morning time. Hallelujah. The struggle, the challenge, the depressive episode, the demonic forces, the spiritual wickedness that you are facing in this morning time, just a foot soldiers. Just a foot soldiers. Just a foot soldiers. There is a higher anointing. There is a higher level of uh, spiritual warfare that the uh, Holy Spirit uh, is already ascended on your life. Uh, hallelujah. In order to get into the spirit and at the level of the spiritual authority, you have to. You have to stand firm. Hallelujah. You have to win over all the foot soldiers of the present situation. This morning time, if you are listening or hearing something, receiving something, can you say praise the Lord in this morning time? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, there is a very good example in the Bible. Chandra Kameshika Benoham, guys. We know what they did it. In the, you know, they, ex, no, they confronted with the challenge in their life. But they said, even if our God save us or not, we are not going to worship before those idols. We will stand firm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Stotra. Hallelujah. In the midst of a challenging situation, Chandra Kameshika Benahom, praise the Lord, stood the form. Hallelujah. As a result of what happened, hallelujah, even though they threw into the fire, but the fire could not snatch them. Even though they went through the fire, Bible says uh, the fourth man was in the fire. Hallelujah. And to deliver them. Hallelujah. In this morning time, if you are standing for the God, if you are standing firm for the Lord, you will see the manifestation of, uh, oh, hallelujah, the Trinitarian God in the midst of your fire. Hallelujah. 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 This morning time, I can just, uh, you know, preach the message. But in this morning time, uh, you know, this is my humble prayer. And I desire that uh, this word should talk to each and everyone who is sit seated over here. Amen. The spirit of our God should uh, encourage each and everyone who is seated over here. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is my humble prayer this morning. Oh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When Chandra Kameshapa Abena home was in the fire the fourth person hallelujah in the fire praise the lord that's why book of Isaiah chapter 43 says uh, oh hallelujah when you walk through the fires i will be with you when you walk through the waters I will be with you. Hallelujah. The flames of the fire will not touch you. The water will not uh, overcome you. This morning time, let me tell you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you walk through the fires, uh, that fire cannot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Flames you. Praise the Lord. Not only that, Elijah. Every Elijah, let me. Tell you in this, remind you in this morning. You know, the threat of uh, Isabel is temporary. Amen. The threat of Isabel is momentary. The Isabel cannot fear you all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next chapter, if you read the towards the end of this chapter, the whole story is changing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, when you stand firm for the Lord, God will work in the midst of your troubling situation. So stand firm for the Lord. 
Say, stand firm for the Lord. The second point, now, second point, you know, verse number three, Bible says, when he was experiencing this threat, what he fled, not only he fled, and he came to Beersheba, and he left his servant there. Very significant lesson. He left his servant there. When we go through depression, when we go through especially those sadness, we don't like, uh, you know, we don't like your uh, friendships. That is the time that we feel like, okay, I just wanted to be lonely. I just wanted to be alone. You know, the problem, when you, you know, when you get to enter alone, the more you alone, the more deeper your depression would be. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And uh, Elijah, you know, this is, this is a word, you know, exact words that he was going through a depressive episode because he didn't want a company at that time. So he left his servant there in Beersheba and he ran for another day. Praise the Lord. The more you ran from the companies, the more you get depressed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, Bible always teaches a lesson, a lesson of a fellowship, a lesson of communion, a lesson of community. That's what the church is all about. You know, sometimes we think, why church, basically, you know? You know, if you ask people outside, many of them don't go to church because they don't feel the importance of the church. But the church is very significant because the church always, no, the Bible always talk about the significance of company and the communion and the fellowship. Praise the Lord. You know, I can tell you some examples. When Jesus was going through the Gethsemane experience, he chose three of them. Praise the Lord. Be with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Even the job, while he was going through this struggle, you know, suffering, he had three friends. The whole passage, the book of Job talks about it. You know, <clears throat> getting a company in the midst of a depression is not a weakness. Rather, this is the time you recognize that you cannot do it alone. Let me, let me make that statement once again. Invite people into the lives while you are going through the tough time. It's not the weakness. Rather, you are recognizing that, that you cannot do it alone. So, you need company. You need a fellowship during the time of your depressive episodes when things goes wrong you know as we malayalis or you know south indians or north indians you know you know we just feel you no know, people you know i don't want anybody to see my vulnerability i don't want anybody to see my inadequacy so that's why we keep people away while we go through tough time but Bible says, this is the most significant time that you need a people in your life. Because God already appointed some for your life. Even though we, you may notice or may not notice, but God already, you know, already appointed few of people into your personal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me go further. Hallelujah. So, the third point. Yes. He 
wanted to die. Praise the Lord. He wanted to die. As I already said, three decisions he took. He fled from, he fled from the place. He was a saint. That is, that is the main important thing, the first point. He fled from the place he assigned because there was a, you know, there is a purpose to fulfill in his life, but he just fled from the place. That was a mistake. He made it. Not only that, now, you know, he abandoned or gave up all the friendship and he wanted to be alone. And now the third point, the culmination of his depression, he wanted to to die. Praise the Lord. He wanted to die. Probably when I say wanted to die, you know, this is, you know, this is not a very rare thing. In the Bible itself, there are a lot of Bible passage. All these spiritual giants gone through spiritual depression in their life. If somebody go through this morning time, let me tell you, this is a very normal Book of Numbers chapter 11, even Moses was praying to God. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once, Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Jonah chapter 4, Jonah prayed to the Lord. Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. Even Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 8, he prayed, you know, you know, he confronted a lot of trouble in the Asia and the great pressure, pressure far beyond our ability to endure. So we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had, we had received the sentence of death. So praise the Lord. As I already mentioned, even Job chapter 3, even he prayed for death. Hallelujah. You can, you can just name after, you know, after one, even Jeremiah. Wanted to die. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this is a common thing. But let me remind you in this morning time. Uh, God has a purpose in the midst of your challenging situation. Five more minutes. Sir. I will finish within five minutes. God has a purpose in the midst of your this challenging situation. What is the God's purpose? That's what I'm going to, going to say and I'm going to conclude it. So, so the next two words, probably you can read, uh, you know, God's recovery plan for Elijah. So, verse number six on, verse number, verse number five on, let me read. As he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said that to him, Arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. Then he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again and the second time touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb. The mountain of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 All this story, we see God did not respond to anything. Praise the Lord. While he was sleeping under the juniper tree, the first thing the Bible says, the angel of the Lord came and gave, praise the Lord. What he did it? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says, uh, came second time, first time, and uh, touched him. Come on, me. Hallelujah. Touched him. He was sleeping. Angel of the Lord was patting on his shoulder. Come on. Get up, man. Hallelujah. And he, God, the angel of the Lord, Gave the bread and the water. You know, he was very tired physically and emotionally. He wanted to sleep again. You know, after slept again, God, no, angel of the Lord, again patting on his shoulder. 
asking him, get up, arise, and eat. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This morning time, let me tell you, every brothers and sisters, if you're going through some serious challenges, this is the time the Spirit of God wanted to part on your shoulder and wanted to say, man, my child, my son and my daughter, get up, arise and eat. Praise the Lord. Get up, arise and eat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you're going through tough time. I know this is a serious turmoil that you are facing at this moment. But get up from the place that you are right now. The get up from the place that you are right now. Hallelujah. When you get up from the place that you are. Hallelujah. The spirit of God. Hallelujah. Asking you to eat. Praise the Lord. What? Hallelujah. Spirit, spirit of God is asking you to eat. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, uh, hallelujah, through the wilderness, they ate spiritual manna. They eat, uh, they ate uh, spiritual, oh, praise the Lord, drinks from, hallelujah, the heavenly drinks, hallelujah. This morning time, let me tell you, praise the Lord, arise and eat the spiritual manna so that you can walk up to 40 days and night. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 40 days and night. Praise the Lord. If you want to walk, you need to arise and eat the spiritual manna. Let me tell you one more reflection over there. What is that? The 40 days, that is, sim, you know, that is another simple, you know, journey of wilderness of Israel. 40 days. The Bible says, if you don't eat the spiritual manna, you, the, the journey will be too great for you. That's what uh, it's mentioned. Journey is too great for you. Praise the Lord. It would be more difficult for you if you don't eat uh, the spiritual manna. Hallelujah. But when you eat the spiritual manna, the, hallelujah, the journey will be too easy for you. Hallelujah. Let me conclude. Praise the Lord. When uh, now... He came up to the Mount Horeb. Praise the Lord. Now, this is the first time the Lord directly spoken to him. Only one word. Praise the Lord. What was the word? Elijah, what are you doing here? Hallelujah. What are you doing here? Elijah knows what he's doing. Even God knows what he was doing all these days. Praise the Lord. Then why God was asking Elijah, what are you doing here? Praise the Lord. This is the time God was, hallelujah, re-establishing, reassessing, return to his mission. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Elijah, he knows what is the purpose of his life? But when, when the threat came against his life, he lost his purpose. He lost his mission. And he fled from the plan of God. And now God is reinstating the plan of God upon Elijah's life. Praise the Lord. What are you doing here? This morning time, Spirit of God is asking to somebody, what are you doing here? What is the purpose of God in your personal life? What is the assignment of God in your life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It is morning time. Hallelujah. Why you are here? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The plan of God is reinstating on your life. Shall we all close our eyes? Shall we look to the Lord in this morning time? God is asking this question to someone in this morning. What are you doing here? Hallelujah. What are you doing here? Hallelujah. What is the plan of God in your life? What is the purpose of God in your life? Hallelujah. Why you are here on this earth? <laughs> Hallelujah. Why you are here on this earth? I request the worship team come forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. There is an assignment which is so great for you. There is a plan which is so great for you. Hallelujah. In order to fulfill this assignment. Hallelujah. God is asking this question in this morning time. Reinstating the plan in this morning time. Shall we? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we all stand up in the presence of God?